morning. I'm meteorologist Michelle Morgan with a look at your 10 a.m. tropical update. It's September 7th and the Atlantic Basin is very busy. We're continuing to monitor two named storms. Both are hurricanes. Earl and Danielle, not a threat to the Gulf Coast or really anyone at the moment. And then we have two other spots that we're monitoring very closely. We have one really in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean it has a higher chance of tropical development as we go through the next two to five days. And also another spot that is slowly emerging off the coast of Africa is just an area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. It has a lower chance as we go through the next two to five days, but of course we'll watch them all very closely as we go through the week. I do want to touch on what's a little bit closer to home here. We have Hurricane Earl. It is meandering uh, closer to the Caribbean Sea, really in the Atlantic Basin, and it has winds of 85 miles per hour, and it is moving to the north at 8 miles per hour. So it is looking pretty good on satellite imagery. The uh, convection really trying to wrap around the center of this system here, and it is fighting a little bit of westerly wind shear, but it is rather weak, so it is going to continue to strengthen as we go through the next several days or so. So it's about 460 miles south of Bermuda, and it is expected to become our next, or actually our first major hurricane of the season as early as Friday morning as a Category 3 hurricane and then eventually becoming a Category 4 hurricane as we go through our Friday. So we'll continue to watch this here long term. It may bring some uh, tropical force winds to the island of Bermuda as we go through your Thursday and also our Friday. Not really a rain event for that island, but certainly some strong winds and some life-threatening or potential life-threatening rip currents for that country. Now, as it continues to go to the northeast as we go through the end of the week, heading into the upcoming weekend, it is going to hold on to its Category 3 hurricane strength. And then as it gets closer to the cooler waters to the north, it's going to eventually dissipate there. Not a threat to the Gulf, course or Gulf Coast or southeast Louisiana. Now Hurricane Danielle, a very impressive storm here. It is holding on to its category one strength with maximum sustained winds of 80 miles per hour. It is found in the northern Atlantic and it's been there for the past week or so moving very slowly. Now it has uh, gained some speed here moving to the northeast at 16 miles per hour and it has stronger wind gust of 100 miles per hour. So where this storm is located here, it's near record warm sea surface temperatures. That's why it's able to uphold its strength. Even though the eye is pretty broken and ragged, it's still pretty impressive here with the convection wrapped around the center of this system. So the latest track from the National Hurricane Center is going to do a little loop-de-loop -loop as we go through the next several days or so. Continuing to move to the northeast at a good rate and then it's going to hold into its category one strength. As it gets closer or as we get closer to to Thursday, even Friday, it is going to dissipate into an area of low pressure as it makes that loop-de-loop -loop and then kind of head out to the southeast and east towards Portugal, most likely a Spain or maybe Spain as a rainmaker as we go through the first half of next week. Again, not an issue for the Gulf Coast or Southeast Louisiana. Now we're continuing to monitor a wave here or a new wave uh, now it's called Invest 95, so we're continuing to investigate this area. It is an area of uh, disrupted showers and also thunderstorms kind of all over the place here and has winds of 35 miles per hour, and this is found in the Central Atlantic, and it is moving at a pretty good rate uh, to the west-northwest at 28 miles per hour. So as we take a look at the ensemble models, the spaghetti plots, pretty good consensus here, taking it to the west-northwest and then eventually heading out to the north, not a threat to anybody. So uh, the question here, what's really steering these systems here and how come they're not making it into the Caribbean or the Gulf of Mexico? It's because there's this huge Bermuda High located in the Central Atlantic and it's strong enough to steer all of these systems. And you can see I have Danielle, I have Earl, and also that area we are watching that has a higher chance of tropical development there circled. So you can see all of these systems are really just wrapping around that area of high pressure as we go through the next several days or so as that area of high pressure continues to expand over the Central Atlantic. So that's going to 
keep those storms over the Atlantic Basin there. So just to put things into perspective, um, NOAA still calling for an above average uh, season with four, 14 to 20 named storms. Out of those named storms, uh, 6 to 10 becoming hurricanes and then 3 to 5 becoming major hurricanes. And that is the August prediction predictions from them. So far for 2022, we've had five named storms, uh, two of them hurricanes, and of course, Earl is forecast to become our next or first major hurricane. But to put things in a perspective here, comparing to last year on the same date, September 20, uh, September 7th, excuse me, we've had 12 named storms by this time last year, five of them becoming hurricanes, and then three of them were major hurricanes. So we're slowly um, getting closer to the peak of hurricane season. So that's why we're seeing an uptick of uh, tropical activity over the Atlantic Basin. So, so far we've had five named storms, as I just mentioned. And if that area that we're watching very closely, the one that has a higher chance of tropical development gets a name, and it could potentially get a name by this weekend. We'll watch it. Uh, Fiona is the next name on the list there. And just real quick, just a recap. We are slowly getting to the peak uh, season or peak period of the hurricane season here, which is around September 12th to the 15th. And we're going to continue to see things become or stay very busy.